believe it or not, we're not starting with the stupid Mario face this time. And not only that, but uh, we're not even starting in B3313. This is actually vanilla. I have a couple things I want to show here. So, this is a file where I've only done a couple things. I've uh, just sort of went around and collected a few basic stars. I opened the cannon in this level, which uh, may seem like a pointless detail, but I did it to make a point later. We're going to hop over here and grab this star real quick. Get it in, of course, the stupidest way possible, because it's more fun that way. And, uh, while I'm doing this, make note of the star display program on the left, because that is a, uh, it's a very interesting tool. It's a third-party program that basically just accesses the save data of the game you're playing in the emulator, and it, uh, displays what stars you have collected in a pretty convenient way. It's uh, used for a lot of ROM hacks, but as you can see it also works for vanilla. I uh, have a lot of uh, vague reasons for doing the things I'm doing in this. It'll all, come, it'll all become clear eventually, but yeah. In Womp's Fortress, as you can see, I have not opened the cannon, and uh, if you notice when I entered the level, I actually had the 100 coin star. We're just going to grab this one real quick. And all we need to do then is just back out and take a look at the score display. So, what I want to draw attention to here is the difference between the in-game score display and how the star display shows things. So, first thing you'll probably notice is the score display has a bunch of other courses listed on the right. Uh, you've got the three Bowser courses, the cap levels, the slide, Secret Aquarium, Rainbow Clouds. The five overworld stars are the ones from Toad and Mips. Uh, but in the game, those are all consolidated into the Castle Secret stars total down here. Uh, another thing to note is in the program, it shows which specific stars I have. Um, it, for instance, in level one, I have stars one, three, and six. But up here, it just shows it just shows I have three. It does not display any spaces between them at all. And uh, the exception to this is the hundred coin stars, which are star number seven. Uh, that one is always listed on the far right next to your coin score, which of course the game also tracks. Just the highest total of coins that you've collected in a level before collecting a star and saving. So. Let's go ahead and actually switch over to the ROM hack here. And, like I said, all that'll make sense eventually. I had a reason for showing it off. We're going to be going into a mostly blank file here. Uh, all this one has done is collected the first red star from Bowser, and it's hit the three cap switches just for convenience sake. So I've got a bunch of uh, seemingly random tasks that I want to take care of here. Basically just to show off a variety of situations that can happen in-game uh, so that we can see them in action and then I can explain them later. So this first half, first half of this video is going to be almost sort of a Let's Play segment. It's just kind of me going around doing stuff and attempting and probably failing to be entertaining in the process. And after all that's done, we're going to go back, analyze what happened, and I'll give an explanation of it all. So, you know, during that whole explanation that I just did, we passed through like 17 different areas, but our end goal is going to be through here. This is uh, definitely not the only way to access this area, but it's the fastest for what I want to do. Here's Polygonal Chaos, everybody's favorite place. The uh, door I just came out of is actually all the way up there. You uh, cannot go back through it once you've gone through, once you come in here. But uh, what I'm interested in is this little weird machine over here. So, I'll hop on into that. And, uh,. This is a pretty cool little level called SGI Indie. I wish I had a uh, proper explanation for this place. It's based off of the internals of 
I believe, like, an N64-related, like, it, it's like the computer that you use to develop software for it or something. If you Google SGI Indie, you can actually find some information on it, but, uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to pop in here because it's pretty cool looking. I'll, uh, be able to kind of get a nice look over the whole level after I go up to the top real quick. Over there is, like, the motherboard and stuff. There's uh, some stuff going on over there. I don't know exactly what all that is. And over here is a floppy disk. I could have shown any star in the game, really, but I figured, you know, if we're going to do that, we might as well show off something cool. So, we'll just grab this star, because it's the easiest one in the level, and that counts as course two, star number one. So let's go grab another star. This one is uh, also going to take a while to go to. We want to go back to the uh, Hall of Divine Transportation, or just Toad Hallway, or whatever you want to call it. All the way back behind the castle. Oh no, I was silent. I don't know. <laughs> I get very self-conscious when I'm not narrating things. It's like, oh no, people are already bored. They're going to switch over and, uh, I don't know, watch people picking their nose or something. But We're uh, getting close. <laughs> There's still a bit to go. This is uh, Castle Nexus, is what I have named this area. Connects to a fair number of places, and the door we're interested in is over here which is going to go to the Lobby Labyrinth. This place uh, can seem kind of big and imposing until you get a lay of the land, much like the game as a whole. But we just want to head over here. This is going to go to some sort of courtyard. I honestly don't remember what this one is named. But, uh, there's a uh, whole-ass level in the back of it, and it's uh, kind of a neat one. I call this one Deep Temple. Like I said, there's, uh, you know, any number of stars that we could show off in this video, but I figured I might as well show some kind of neat ones that are in levels that are kind of out of the way and people might not be aware of yet. And there's a red coin star in this level, but I'm sure as hell not going after that, so we're going to pop down here and grab this one. Thankfully, I uh, managed to time it pretty well to where this platform was near me, so I didn't have to wait you know, five hours for it to come over. I don't feel like dealing with the flippy platform, so we're just going to float over. And, oh, would you look at that? We've only collected one star in the game, or technically two if you count the Bowser red star, and we already have a duplicate. It's almost like I planned it. But, yep, that is uh, another copy of Course 2, star number one. So, let's go after a few other things. I want to head to Lobby C. And in the fire painting over here, we have a level that is new to 0 0.9. I call this one Blarg's Boiler, which is uh, just the name of a level in Yoshi's Story, but there's a lot of fire levels in this game. I kind of ran out of names for them. This one's got Blarg's in it. I figured, why not? It's also kind of an interesting level because it has a uh, exterior and interior section. We're actually going to get both of the stars in this place, so first we'll grab this one over here. Hopefully not run into any of these uh, eyeless hippos. And there we go, Course 7, Star 7, which is uh, kind of interesting because in vanilla, Star 7 is always set as the 100 coin star. But uh, in this, they can be anything. There are no 100 coin stars in this hack. 
there were in the uh, 0 0.7 version, and they were kind of funky because unless you were using the Star Tracker, you uh, would never know what number course you were in, or even if it was a proper numbered course as opposed to one of the like bonus places. And, uh, you know, there's never any guarantee that there's even 100 coins in a level, so... There's a lot of coin collecting for, uh, rel relatively little gain. There was one star that was kind of interesting, because you had to kind of pop between two different levels to actually get enough coins for it, but... It was decided to remove it, and I'm kind of glad they did. So... There's another new star. Uh, it did increase our total from two to three, but the... Star display is not showing it. And uh, the reason for that is because that was star uh, 2-8. So in the star display, there is an option to show eight stars per level instead of seven. And as soon as I do that, there it is. We've got stars seven and eight for course seven. It's uh, much in the way that the star display like shows all of the other possible uh like ram addresses i don't think that's the right term because it's not ram it's save data but it shows the the addresses for all of the other stars that didn't exist in vanilla like you've got you know multiple stars per bowser level cap level etc plus we've got this extra uh s3 level that didn't exist in vanilla uh much in the way that it tracks all of those it also tracks an eighth star per level, which the vanilla game sort of does, but it's weird. We'll get to that again in a minute here. So, while I was explaining all that, we have uh, headed over to the lava, or sorry, the water equivalent of Lethal Lava Land, which is called Idyllic Islands. I'll grab a star there, and uh, that one did not increase my total and did not show up anywhere on the star display. But uh, it didn't appear to be a duplicate of anything, so wonder what's up with that. Might need to investigate that further. So let's grab a different one, except uh, as you may see, the one I just collected is still back there, as if I never collected it at all. But we're going to ignore that for the time being and deal with these guys. Because, uh, if you may remember, in Vanilla Lethal Lava Land, there's a star that you get from <laughs> killing uh, three bullies on the same platform. And uh, this is the equivalent to that star. It's just three Chuckas instead. So we'll take care of them. Get a new star. And uh, once again... The star counter has increased. We did get a new one from that, but uh, it's not showing in the display at all. It is not in any of the main courses, any of the secret courses. Uh, it's not star number eight for anything. But uh, the game sure seems to think I got something. It, it's showing it. So, something happened. Uh, let's go ahead and actually reset and take a look at what the score display in game has to say about that so let's review uh, we started out by getting the one in SGI Indy which was uh, 2-1 that one's up here and then we got the one in Deep Temple which was also 2-1 so that's right here we got the two from Blarg's Boiler which is uh, star number eight and star number seven. Uh, eight is back here because it's just part of the straight line that the normal stars would be, whereas seven is specifically the 100 coin star. And then we got that one that uh, from the idyllic islands that did add to the total but didn't seem to appear anywhere, which is just being tracked down here. But uh, something else is different. It says I have four coins in whatever this level is, level 7. And, uh, much like how this down here is the Bowser 1 red star, 
Uh, that's because it has saved to the coin score. And I kind of talked about that very briefly at the end of the last video, but we're about to go into a much deeper explanation of what that means and uh, why the game is doing it, along with a lot of other things. So let's get into that. So let's take a look at how Vanilla Mario 64 saves its data. Then we can use that and build off of it to see how B3313 does it. I'll be showing the Bob on Battlefield and Womp's Fortress examples from the start of the video. Each of the 15 main courses only have to store a few things. There's seven stars that you can collect, and there's the cannon lid that you can remove by talking to the bob -omb buddy. Each of these are just a simple true or false, which can be represented by a one or a zero. So basically, there's a single 8-bit binary number that is stored to save this info. When you collect a star, then a particular zero changes to a one, and that means the game will always know that that star is collected. It'll show up on the mission select screen, it'll appear blue in the level when you see the star again, and no matter how many times you collect it after the first time, it will never change any other zeros into ones. And the same principle applies to the cannon activation. Once you do it, you can never undo it, and the game will always remember it. So that's why it's simple for ROM hacks to change that bit to represent a star instead of the cannon, so we have eight stars per level instead of seven. Aside from that, there's one other thing per level that gets written to the save file, and that's the coin high score for the level, which is also represented as an 8-bit binary number. If you don't understand how binary works, you're not really missing out on much here. But basically, the number of coins that you collect in the level is checked against the previous high score, and if it's higher, then it gets overwritten. My score of 111 in Womp's Fortress, for example, shows up as 01101111 because that's how it would be written in binary. But B3313 doesn't save coin scores. It never does the thing where you exit a level and it resets your coins to zero and it shows how many you collected before it asks you if you wanted to save. So that means there's another eight bits per level in the memory that could be used to store stars, just like they did with the cannon lid. But since the in-game score display still shows the coin scores, that means that if you collect a star whose ID replaced one of those bits, it will still add to the corresponding number of coins on that screen. For example, the red star from the Bowser 1 fight has the ID of course 14 coin score bit number 4, so it adds 8 coins to the score display. If I was to collect the one from floor 2B, that one is course 14 coin score bit number 7, which adds another 64 coins to the 8 that I already had. With all this information, we can see how many possible unique stars could be in the game. There are 16 for each main level, there's the 7 normal ones, the 8th one that replaced the cannon lid, and the 8 that are stored in the coin score. Then you have eight each for all the extra levels, which are the three Bowsers, Cap Levels, the Slide, the Overworld, and the three Secret Courses. And that should bring us to a total of 328. Except not really. Uh, the vanilla game doesn't do this, but B33 actually has additional coin score slots for all of the extra levels too, minus the Overworld. So that's another 80 right there. And it also stores coin scores for another 10 secret levels, S4 through S13, so that's yet another 80. So the actual final number of unique star IDs that are possible in the game in its current state is 488. Of course, that doesn't mean there's actually that many, since as we've seen, there's duplicates in the game. Any particular star ID in the game, for example, course 2 star 1, can be applied to more than one star. In fact, over half the stars in the game are duplicates. This is one of the things that was intended to be a late fix in development. Once every area was added and all of the stars were placed, there was going to be one big sweep over everything in the game to assign unique star IDs to everything. But because the game ended up getting released before being 100% complete, that is why we have 200 duplicate stars. Uh, there is a lot of room for new IDs, outside of the basic ones, but most of it just doesn't get used. There's a few dozen stars that get saved to the coin scores of the main 15 courses, but almost none that make use of the expanded ones for the extra levels. I know of exactly one star that does make use of that space. 
if we enter the parallel lobby from the nebula lobby, there is a pit in the floor right in, right in front of you, and you can take it to Bowser's airship, which is a short but a pretty unique level. It's the only one in the game that I'm aware of, at least, that is totally locked to a 2D plane. You can't move up and down at all in here. And uh, all you got to do is dodge the cannons, and we get through all that. There is pipe at the end here, and wouldn't you know it, yet another Bowser fight. It's about the 15th one of these. So we'll go ahead and deal with him in the usual fashion here. That is, if I can just ever throw straight. Well, good enough. So, you know, as usual, he squeaks. And we get a red star, but not a real red star. It doesn't count towards those totals at all. As you'll see in the star tracker, this one saved to uh, win cap slot 6, which is uh, a plus 32 coins to that level's coin score. And because the game has no way of displaying that, uh, you won't ever see it on this screen, but it just shows up as one of the generic castle secret stars. There's a few other things to address here. So remember how some of the red stars in that last video didn't count towards the star total? That's because some of the star IDs are just weird. The game remembers that they've been collected, uh, they just don't actually increase the in-game counter. The IDs for coin score 12-7 through 14-3 are reserved for green stars. There's only one of them in the game, uh, which saves to a plus 4 in course 14, but there's still room for 12 others. And no, I have no idea if these do anything, but they are at least treated as unique stars that the game tracks separately, so the potential is there. The IDs for coin score 14-4 through 15-8 are reserved for the red stars. That would be 13 unique ones that you would be able to use to open the final door if they were all actually available in-game. Now here's the weird part. The ones in course 14 don't count towards the star total, but the ones in course 15 do. That's why when I got seven unique red stars in the last video, the game only displayed three of them. I'm pretty sure that this was just a mistake and none of them were actually meant to count. Besides those, we still have a few other weird cases. The coin score stars for S11 through S13 don't increase the in-game total either. As far as I'm aware, no stars actually exist that were assigned to those IDs, so it doesn't mean anything for people playing the game, but it is a thing. Also, Overworld-8 doesn't increase the total either. I mentioned that back when I was talking about the yellow switch. The switch does have the ability to turn that star on and off, and the star tracker can show it, but the game itself offers no indication that it exists. If I had to guess, I think this might have something to do with the fact that Star 8 is always the replacement for the cannon lid flag, and the overworld cannon in vanilla is the grate that disappears in the courtyard when you have 120 stars, so it's probably just a special case that gets treated differently, but that's just my guess, I don't really know. So remember when I said that the total number of stars that the game can track is 488? That is still correct, but because of all the ones that don't get added to the star total, that means that even if every possible ID had a star associated with it, the maximum the game can display is 445. Uh, lastly, there was also that weird star in Idyllic Islands that didn't do anything and reappeared after I collected it. This is actually a totally different thing from star IDs. I just call this a fake star. I believe other ROM hacks also use them sometimes, and uh, the community refers to them as troll stars, so either name. Uh, the game lets you collect them, but it doesn't store any sort of data related to it. They don't increase the star total or the coin scores. Uh, no matter how many times you collect them, the game will always just display them as yellow. I know of 17 of these in the game. So let's try to wrap this up. Now that I've explained how all the star IDs work, how some of them don't add to the total, and how the fake stars exist, I'm sure the question on everyone's mind is, how many stars are in the game? And as I said back in my original FAQ video, it's complicated and it depends on if you're asking how many collectible star objects are in the game, or what the highest total that it can track is. I don't claim to know about every single star in the game, 
I just learned of a new one a few days ago. I'm sure there's more, but let's just accept that this total is probably off and that it can be corrected later. So first, let's disregard the yellow switch entirely because it's weird and it just turns stars off and on. Mario isn't physically collecting them. There's also a few that are out of bounds and are completely impossible to reach. So if you ignore all those, I know of 417. Of those, there are seven that I don't believe are possible to get without cheats. Six of them are duplicate star IDs anyway, uh, but the other one is unique. I don't know of a way to get it without the levitate code, or by just using the yellow switch, since it is ID Overworld 3 and it can be flipped on with that. There's also the 17 fake stars that don't do anything. And there's eight stars, which make up five unique star IDs uh, that don't count towards the in-game star total. Those are four of the reds and also the green one. I would still argue that those count, but the game disagrees, so it's, you know, it depends. That leaves 385 that, although over half of them are duplicates, have the potential to increase the star total, depending on the order they're collected. When you remove all the duplicates, that leaves 178. With the randomness of the yellow switch taken into account, the total could potentially be 180. That is the highest total that I know of as of the day that I'm uploading the video. And that's just about everything I could say about stars without going over every single individual one in the game, which obviously I'm not going to be doing here. But what I will do is finally link the spreadsheet that I made that documents everything. There's two pages. The first page lists every area in the game and every connection between them. I've named most of the new areas myself, so the names are not always going to match uh, other maps that people have made or resources like the fan wiki. The second page just lists all of the stars arranged by star ID, so that you can see which ones are duplicates of each other, and if you're using the Star Tracker program, you can see which ones you're missing. I'll go ahead and link the custom layout file that displays all of the coin score stars and that stuff in the description. Uh, that file was made by the same person who figured out the coin score stars, uh, which is MX64. Uh, she was somebody that I found on Chris's server, and she's been a lot of help with this. I do want to say one last thing here. Uh, I've been saying for a while that the best way to experience this game is blind, or at least partially blind. Uh, if you're watching these videos, obviously you're seeing a lot of stuff that you might have not seen before, but I don't want to show literally everything in these. I've put a lot of work into the spreadsheet, and I wanted to share it and show it off to people, but really Chris has put in a thousand times more work into the game itself. And so I kind of don't like the idea of ruining all the surprises for people. I've already kind of done that with my public stream where I showed off most of the highlights and I do sort of regret doing that. But it is up to everybody to decide on their own if they want to be spoiled or not, so there's really no point to keep withholding it. Uh, my personal recommendation is to play until you have at least 100 stars before you start actively looking up the places that you've missed. And I think that's it for now. I don't really know what other things to cover after this, so if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. This is probably the most in-depth video I'm going to be making on the game, but I'm not opposed to showing off other stuff if people want.